shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to episode 15 of the ASICS Intruder build. Now in 14, we went ahead and put down primer, put down some marbling, and we put down the base coats for the various ghost grays. This time out, it's going to be all about refining the paint, getting various small details in place, making the gray a little bit more what I want it to be, uh, both smoother and less sort of randomly modeled like this but also battered and beat to hell at the same time. So first up, there are a couple elements on these intruders that I guess you could sort of say show through the paint. Uh, one of them is up front, especially on Cupcake 511, which is the intruder that I'm doing. You can see if you look at reference photos, basically a very faint sort of hint of the radome tan right up here in the forward section of the radome. Now on Hive's intruders, the Obviously, the upper surfaces were light gold gray. The bottom surfaces were insignia white. The radome could be a couple different colors. It was usually either radome tan, which is this lovely sort of flesh color, or it was white, or it was black, or sometimes it was white with this forward section in radome tan. So we are going to go ahead and work on getting that sort of faint hint of radome tanness. And my plan for this, because it's basically a very clean break where it is and isn't on the reference photos, is to go ahead and spray it and then mask and then work on the section behind it because any sort of decreasing radius conic section type thing like this, trying to mask this way is a pain in the ass. Trying to mask this way is pretty easy. So we're going to spray this, then mask it, then work up here. I was worried about this color being too fleshy, but I think it's actually going to work out really well. This, uh... This intruder is a big girl. For sure. Okay. We're going to call that. Okay, so I'm going to call that good. Give this a little bit of time to set up. Then we'll come in and do some more shit to it. Okay, now that the radome tan is down, it's time to move on to the yellow on the leading edges of the slats. Now, from what I understand, this is basically sort of an anti-corrosion tape, adhesive type thing that would be basically applied to the leading edges of the slats, in some cases the leading edges of the stabilizers, and even in some cases the leading edges of the tail itself. Basically, I'm assuming to prevent the typical dings and whatnot that hit leading edges in flight operations, uh, leading to chips and things like that, because chips are not fun to deal with uh, in a naval environment, and so putting essentially some sort of tape there to take the hits makes sense. And I'm assuming the yellow, I guess, is, you know, when it gets worn off, you can tell it's not yellow anymore, something like that. Anyway, this stuff is pretty apparent on most intruders in the uh, VA-65 squadron that I can find good photos and angles of, again, along those leading edge slats and along the leading edges of the pylons. So we need to apply these. Now, my plan 
and I've honestly been really bouncing around on how to address this. I think my plan as of now is to go ahead and essentially mask off the boundaries of them, which Trumpeter helpfully provides with this little panel line here. Basically use that to mask off where the yellow goes. Then instead of spraying yellow first, I'm going to spray, I guess, like a dirtier, darkish gray type color. Uh, basically what the adhesive looks like, I guess, once the yellow is gone. It, it really varies, again, depending on the photo. Some, some of them it's nice and consistent throughout. Others it's worn away. Others it's literally painted over with ghost grays, except showing through in a few spots. So I want to kind of base it with something and then come in with the yellow on top of it. I'm still debating whether or not I want to do hairspray or maybe some liquid frisk or something like that just to kind of knock some bits of it back. Then we'll unmask it and we'll do the corrosion control touch-ups and things like that. So I'm going to get to masking and we'll pick back up in a few seconds. For this gray layer, I'm going to be using some AMT 12 dark gray. It's a nice dirty dark brownish gray color. MRP 20. All right, now it's time for the next go round to go ahead and spray the yellow. For this, I've mixed up a blend of MRP Zinc Chromate Primer, MRP REF Marking Yellow, and Radome Tan. So it's a nice sort of desaturated light yellow color. Okay, got all that shit sprayed, now it's time to pull off the masking, be right back. Okay, so we have got the leading edges sprayed, they look pretty decent, look like they might go a little bit too far up the slats for my taste, and for the reference photos, but that's a bridge that we can cross when we get back to spraying other shit. Looks like I've also got a little bit of overspray right here, and I've got a little bit on the underside as well. Let's go ahead and look at that. Tiny little bit of underspray or overspray right there, too. Other than that, though, this looks pretty solid. I'm happy with the color. Pretty happy with sort of the less than uniform spray. My only significant qualm is do I need to bring this down more toward the uh, toward the leading edge? Okay, back to the radome. So once the radome tan set up, I went ahead and masked it with a very thin strip of 0.7 millimeter azu tape, capped it off with some liquid frisket, and now we're going to spray a bit of AMT12 MRP20 to basically hide the extra radome tan that we've got going on. Okay, so I jumped ahead just a little bit, and 
blended in the AMT-12 and some mottled Dark Gunship Grey with Light Ghost Grey on the bottom down here and Dark Ghost Grey on top. Now it is time to yank off the masking and get to still more blending. That is so fun to remove. Okay. Now comes the tricky part. We need to take this radome tan and blend it in as well. Okay, for this operation, I've taken MRP Dark Ghost Gray and I've added some Mr. Leveling Thinner. And there's a bug flying on my face, which is annoying. Okay, it's time for a quick interlude in painting the intruder to pay a little bit of attention to the FLIR turret. Now, these parts aren't terrible by any means. I do wish that the sensor ball itself were actually a ball and uh, had a separate frame to fit into and all that kind of stuff. But this will do. And it fits nicely up into the little, uh, little chin place where it sits. So, yay on that. I will note, however, that the clear parts for the sensor openings, these smaller ones especially, are just hot garbage. Uh, thick sprue gates that break and take the things out around, and they're this weird, like, they were this weird oval shape that just did not sit right at all. So basically, I bored them out, and with a tiny, tiny little piece of clear acetate that I punched out with my punch set. Uh, basically worked out sort of a, you know, just a test fit to make sure that this whole thing would even work in the first place. It's honestly not easy to... So, there you have it. Nice clear window, right? However, it's clear, and I want something maybe a little bit spicier than that going on. So, what I did is I took the lid off of a little to-go container thingy, cut it out flat so I could fit it on my punch, and put some of this Hasegawa polarized film on it that when it's over something that is white, it turns pink. But then when you put it over something that is black, it turns this awesome green color. So put that on there, punched out two things, and we've got one and two. So now the idea is to fit those in here, glue them in place from the back with some UV glue so they'll stay in place. There's one. It's pretty awesome. The reason I'm doing this while they're still in halves is so that they don't fall back into it and get lost forever, and so that I can get in there behind them with the UV glue and make everything look nice and all that stuff.
gonna take the UV light put it under the desk so I don't cure the other shit accidentally. The cool thing about putting this stuff on the uh, this UV stuff on the inside is it kind of works as like a lens to slightly. Uh, to slightly punch up the effect as it comes together get it looking like this we get some cool flashes of something going on there now obviously once this is glued this is going to have to be filled and cleaned up and everything, but we'll just mask over the other shit to get that part done. And I'm just going to hope the center clear part fits decently. <laughs> okay, so everything up with the radome up here has been sprayed. It's kind of blended in now. I've also gone and done sort of a general light coat of the light ghost gray across the bottom here. Just to basically brighten it up a bit and get a bit more coverage. Now this is going to require more dirtying down the line, but I wanted to get this lighter than it was when I first sprayed it down, uh, basically closing the opacity gap a little bit. So, this is how it stands. And you can see the different tone of the radome there. And then up top, we're kind of in the same place we were with the dark ghost gray. Everything is looking pretty solid. And we will pick back up shortly. Okay, so picking up where we left off. I'm not entirely happy with the way that the yellow leading edges went. I feel like they're maybe too uh, too deep back on the slats. And I want to get a bit, uh, a bit asymmetrical here. So as you can see on this one, I've taped off the very leading edge. Left this kind of blank. And then I've taped off the whole thing over here. So we're going to go ahead and cover this up with a dark gray. And then come in and viciously attack it with uh, dark ghost gray. The other thing I get to play with is FLIR turret. So basically all I've done here is after kind of cleaning up the join line, I went ahead and put some liquid frisket on top of the two side balls. And I will be putting down a little bit of dark gray in that center area as well, just to cover it up. And then we'll be getting to the painting of the colors again. The only thing I'm really concerned about here is I don't want to get any of this on the leading edges of the actual pylons, so when I get there I've got some post-it notes just to kind of hold in place, block the spray. And I've also got a little bit of putty that I put along the wing root here need to spray that over and kind of blend it in as well. Let's go ahead and do that part first. Not at all sure how I feel about this one, but we're going to try it. Spray a little bit of clear dove linen on the upper surfaces of the wings here. Some fading effect going on. And 
Now this is the point where these stencils can actually be used because I'm spraying this stuff super, super thin. So we can just put a little bit of shit down. And it'll barely show, and it'll be nice and subtle. The problem is these damn wing fences get in the way of things. This uh, super thin cleared up linen is interesting because as it dries, it very much blends into what's going on with the dark ghost gray. And my plan is once I get this done, I'm going to come in with some different dark ghost grays. I've got one from the uh, Tamiya Lacquer Painto line. I've got one from Guns. They're slightly different tones than what the uh, what the MRP is, so that will afford some opportunities for variation, touch-ups, that sort of a thing. First we gotta get there. Alright. That looks sufficiently toned down. Nice. hot spots over here we need to okay so I went ahead and knocked out something I've been procrastinating about and kind of stressing about where it fits in the build order for some time now and that is the non-slip walkways on the fuselage spine the stabilizers and the wing roots now these are nice and black and things like that on early intruders back in the high vis scheme days by the time that they uh, moved over to tps and were flying around in desert storm these were heavily weathered faded out painted over all that kind of stuff but because of the non-skid texture they still got dirty in different ways than the rest of the fuselage did so they captured a bit more dirt and things like that and they do show up in overhead shots when you can find them so I needed to add some texture, and to add the texture, I went ahead and used this ammo anti-slip paste, which basically you just kind of smear on, and then with a brush or with foam sponges, you just kind of tamp it down into a texture. It's very similar in a way to adding like uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 to tank hole to do cast texturing. If you've done that, this is really no different just a different material essentially um, one thing I wish I had done is I wish I had been a bit more liberal with masking around these because there are some spots where the sponge went a little bit crazy and got kind of outside my tape barrier and I've had to go back and clean off a little bit of that excess that sort of spooged outside the lines no big deal though uh, basically it's all good to go I need to let it kind of sit and do its thing for overnight and then we will paint it a sort of dirty brown gray take the masking off and we'll start incorporating it back into the paint scheme so sweet okay so this ammo anti-slip stuff has had overnight to set up and even though it looks really really rough in the camera i will say when i run my hand over it it is textured but it is not pebbly or anything like that it's got a nice smoothness to it so it's now time to start painting over it we're gonna sneak up on this a little bit starting with some AMT 12 Okay, so my camera decided to shit the bed for a while and wouldn't focus and then wouldn't turn on. So I plowed ahead and in addition to the AMT-12, I sprayed some Dark Gunship Gray. Again, this Dark Horse hero color for this build um, and went ahead and lightened up the walkways. So it's time to go ahead and strip off the masking and see how it all looks.
Oh, cool. It peels up. That's nice. It's got a bit of a rubbery thing going on. Let's see if we can mash that back down. That would have been good to know. That's cool though, you can kind of pick at the sides. I didn't realize that either. This is the problem of using something for the first time on a live build. You need to figure out the ins and outs of it. So to fade out the walkways a bit more, I went ahead and dusted them with a quick spray of dark ghost gray. Now I'm coming through with light ghost gray and doing some good old corrosion control touch-ups. help give the surface a nice uh, nice dinged up quality okay so right about here my microphone decided to shit the bed so I'm currently recording this as a voiceover Now at this point with the intruder, I've gone ahead and applied the light ghost gray touch-ups and now it's time to get on with the Tamiya dark ghost gray and the MRP medium gray. The idea here is to get, you know, a nice battered, touched up, weary looking intruder surface. And the reason that I like the Tamiya dark ghost gray for this is it has that bluer tint that you see in a lot of Desert Storm aircraft like A6s and A7s. Now here I've already applied the medium gray. You can see it up there on the uh, starboard leading slat. And now I'm applying the Tamiya dark ghost gray, that bluer tone. So here we go. A little bit in there. We've got some up here between the wing fence and the wing fold hinge. Just trying to get sort of a general thing going on. We've got some more along the fuselage. Exciting. Okay, so a bunch of corrosion control touch-ups have been applied to the surface of the intruder. Uh, not sure how well they're going to show up necessarily on camera because at least my cell phone's image sensor has had a hell of a time really grabbing what these look like. And everything looks kind of like washed out and bluish. But, you know, for example, on the outer wing here, main surface is dark ghost gray then you've got some of this Tamiya dark ghost gray which is that sort of bluer tone like right in here right in here got a little bit of medium gray up here on this leading edge extension we've got some light ghost gray tracking over the yellow leading edges right there and kind of in splotches around the place and basically we've got that going on kind of wherever you look on the aircraft various touch-ups happening some around the Slime lights right there, for example. And even on the underside, something that seemed pretty common from what I could find. Sort of here where the leading it where the leading edge slats hit the wings, you've got that blue or dark ghost gray over the light ghost gray. You've got touch-ups down here around the intakes and things like that. I actually went with a one with that bluer uh, dark ghost gray for the little pocket of upper camouflage here on the lower side. And everything is looking pretty good. So I think this is probably an opportune place to hit pause and wrap up part 15 before moving into part 16. Because I still have a lot of little shit I have to do. But it's not little shit that's all that interesting. 
it's things like painting the gear doors and masking off and painting the crew ladder areas and things like, you know, shit like that. So we will pick up probably with a bunch of little painting in 16 before we move into the markings. So hope you all are finding this useful. And I realize that at this stage, it's getting really, really tough to film this well because this is just such a big fucking aircraft and getting nice and tight, especially on the sides. There's really no effective way to hold this thing at a, you know at like a 90 degree angle. So I'm doing what I can. Uh, Hope it again is still useful, and we will pick back up with part 16, I believe, uh, shortly. So thanks for watching, and check you later.